Hey guys, I'm back with another video again on uh, lighting your cabinets. So these ones I picked up from Ikea. Um, now, a lot of people don't like them because the sides are very thick and it kind of blocks your your field of view for what you're you're looking at. For helmets, it works great. You can see them no problem. Things are cut off a little bit, but you just have to move to the side a bit to see them. Now, I like them because they lock and because of how kind of big and how much weight each shelf can hold. Completely up to you. Um, I will put a link down in the description below on um, the name of these and um, the link to Ikea so you can pick some up if you like the video. One thing I will mention, if you guys have this beast over here, the Hulkbuster, he actually does fit on the bottom shelf of this. Perfect. And you can actually spread his legs out like it is right here if you want to have him in a more, you know, dynamic pose than just kind of museum pose. So he does fit in these cabinets. Um, so that's another benefit of these ones because it can handle the weight on the bottom shelf. And these things are very strong. So how I ran the lights for these guys. So I have two of these. And the way my uh, kind of collection works is kind of everything goes from tall, medium, and then small. So it looks really good in my, my spot that I have set up here. I kind of just wish this was kind of the stark white, but eventually I may just take these apart and repaint them. So over here, we have another one as well. And it fits the quarter scales really well. And it still gives you enough room to put a six scale collection on the bottom if need be. So these shelves are quite wide, um, so they fit no problem. I've tried multiple different lighting um, kind of solutions in this cabinet. I put them all the way at the top there, as you can see from the remnants of removing those. Those were just the click button ones. They were okay, but I quickly realized when I'm displaying stuff, if you have lights just at the top of your cabinet, if there's something big on the top shelf, no light gets through the bottom. And I did not want to attach any lights to the glass because you want to be able to see through if possible. So if you have gaps and stuff and you say you got stuff on the lower half, see, I, I can see through and still see what's back there. If I put a light there, it's blocked by the light and it kind of looks kind of half-assed in my opinion. So instead I ran a wire, well, I ran the wire for the same lights that I use in every other cabinet, and those are the Minger lights from Amazon. I'll move these guys off to the side here so you can see that wire in the back corner. The bottom half lifts up, as you can see. So it's super easy to get that wire through. And then I just start on the one side here. I'll see if I can get this far enough in that you can see it and focus it. There we go. So, and then I just stick it. Um, these lights have, uh, like I've said in my previous videos, it has that um, adhesive already attached to the back. So when you peel and stick it up, just make sure that, um, let me just try and adjust this camera here, sorry. Um, for these pieces here for the shelves, run on the inside here closer to the door and then you can still adjust these shelves no problem all the way up to the top here you run it and then up at the top here i know my camera is a little out of focus here it takes a lot to focus on these so these i ran pretty quick Take your time, run them, you know, straight, and you won't get these. Um, if you take your time, just run it right along this kind of 
edge here, just not in the curve, because if you do, then it doesn't stick properly. That's That was the issue I made with this one, and that's why I had to readjust it. And then back over into this corner, and you bring it all the way back down again to the bottom. So when you bring it down to the bottom here, again, this is the same as my other video of the detolf. Um, this is your choice. You don't have to do this. Again, it just seems like it projects light up a little more and it lights up the cabinet a little more. So these are 16 and a half feet. So when you come back down, you have the option to run a strip along the bottom here, which I suggest at least doing that. And then if you want, you can continue by just putting some slight curves in it all the way around the back of it and then back over here. So that is an option if you would like. Not everybody will like to do it, but I like to give people that option myself. When you have that LED strip right in the front here, like I said, at least do that because then you have a perfect strip going all the way around this entire thing. And it is blocked by this piece on the bottom here. So the nice thing about these, they lock. Um, I haven't really had to dust proof these because the gapping on them is not huge. And if you put weather stripping, this is doors just going to push out. I have dusted these in the mm, four years I've had them. I've dusted them, I think three times. So it hasn't been that bad at all for these. And then the middle cabinet that I have is also all of these cabinets that I own are all from Ikea. They're a cheaper and easier solution uh, for displaying your stuff. Um, if you have the money and there's other options where say like this cabinet here, you don't have to have this thing in the middle, but the cabinet still locks. I would have preferred that, but I went with this option and just kind of focus on moving my figures off to the side so things aren't blocked. This cabinet here, um, I did a little more of a modification to this. Um, this displays all of my Lego in it. And this, I had a lot of these type of lights and I'll show you these in a minute here. And these are just the click on kind of LED strip lights, which are great. They go across here, no problem, but I wanted something that I was able to turn on all of my cabinets by literally just clicking a button and they all turn on. So I needed something that would work with a smart plug and stuff like that. So these are fine if you wanna go to each shelf and turn each and every one of them on, which, I would never end up turning them on. So again, I got a set of Minger lights or just actually, I think one fit in this. Yes, because they're 16 and a half feet long. So I ran it through, there's a back hole in the back there. I ran the wire through and brought it over to here. I guess I pulled a little too hard on that. And then start running it all the way around, right next to the shelves. Don't pull it out any farther, because then the doors will interfere with it. So the door stops are right here. Try and keep it on the inside and then it reflects the light better. And across the top, all the way along. And then back down and in the front. So I know it's not on every single shelf. If you wanted to do every shelf, you could, but if you ever had to move or readjust the shelves, you'd have to rip off the lights as well. Now, just with those lights on, it lights up everything fairly well, enough that you can see it. I know it's hard to see on the, the video here, but it lights up everything enough that you can see it. I wouldn't recommend it if you're gonna be displaying those 
like the hot toy figures and stuff. For Lego, display, uh, the lighting and stuff is more than adequate. On the top here, this is what I'm talking about for modifications. So you can fit a lot of stuff on the top of this. And I wanted my centerpiece to be my favorite piece in my entire collection. So in the center of my collection is my Hulkbuster, but he had no light. And I didn't want to just run a strip on the top of this because then you're staring at the strip. It's kind of bugs your eyes and it's kind of right into your eyes. So for this, I put a strip on here. So I actually just got this from Home Depot. It's already painted white and I just cut it to the size here and just brad nailed it in and then ra ran the LED strip on an angle and it reflects the light nicely. So at least my centerpiece is, you know, visible and not in the dark. You don't have to do that, but if you do display something, something on the top of this cabinet, I would recommend trying to figure out a way to run lights. Again, this is just a Minger um, LED strip again. They are adjustable for brightness, so that wasn't even the, the brightest setting. That's the lowest setting, not really one that you want. Brightest setting is really good, but can sometimes be a little hard on the eyes in the corner over here, but not too bad. It's, it brightens everything up. And if you have stuff in behind like this here, it also brightens that up as well. So those are how I lit both of these cabinets. Um, again, if you like these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well. And if you have any questions on anything I missed or uh, something that you're thinking of doing, drop it down in the comment section below. I'm pretty quick at trying to respond to you guys and make sure I get you the correct information. So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.